Now, um, some stakeholders have rejected this move by the government. Um, we'll be speaking to Nogbet Bogbochi. Um, he is the former Deputy Communication Director of CCT Ghana via phone. Hello, good morning to you, sir. Okay, all right, so he's not on the line. Let's continue from where we stood. Yeah. Um, from everything that you have said, does it mean that the government does not really care about its citizens? Well, basically that's how it will look like mm. because at the end of the day, if you really care, you listen to your citizens, isn't right. it? And the citizens are saying, your government is too large. Cut the size, collapse some ministries into one. Mm. So, for instance, Ministry of Communication and Information can operate together. Mm -hmm. Transport, aviation, railways, they are all, um, you know, basically transportation, isn't it? Mm. Agri can, uh, fisheries, basically the same thing. And then development authorities, what are they doing? Mm. You know, we can go on and on. Certain ministries are basically unnecessary. It's just a cost burden on the average or the ordinary taxpayer. Mm. So collapse those, at least in the meantime, until, you know, we bring our debt to much more sustainable levels. Mm. But government is adamant, refuse to listen to anybody. And the, the standard is that for you to, to, to you know, bring mm. the debt to more sustainable level. This is what you need to do. But you are doing exactly the opposite. You are still projecting to run a deficit budget. Could it be that? Um, that high, not mm. even pre this whole thing, right. pre this whole thing. You claim you were running a deficit lower than 5%, mm. which actually was even 7% plus anyway. But let's even pretend that was it. Then how then do you now say that you doing you know, debt sustainability mm. for your debt to be more sustainable, you will still be doing more than what you were doing before this whole problem or case. Mm. We can't be doing the same thing over and over again and then expect to mm. give, get a different re result. That, mm. That's, uh, you know, right. absurdity in itself. But do, do you think no. IMF was consulted? Are they, see, part, are they even part of this, this no, whole I, IMF. They don't mention them, but it mm. looks like no, they were consulted. No, IMF will only tell you, mm -hmm. do your debt sustainability al analysis, okay? How do you plan to reduce your debt to a much more sustainable level? And then they will give you one or two advices that, for instance, if mm. you said you, the option is to do debt restructuring or debt exchange, okay. then this is what you Albert, need. Albert, hold on for me. Let's speak to um, Dr. Thomas. Um, Musa, he is the general secretary. Titus, Titus Bayu, right? He is the general secretary for Ghana Medical Association. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, and good morning to your colleagues and your viewers. Mm, I good hope morning. you're doing well. I'm good by God's grace. We bless God. Right, so um, you have rejected the move. Kindly tell us why. All right. So I think uh, it's not just the medical association, mm -hmm. but uh, as I mentioned in some earlier interviews, we are part of a larger group called the Forum. Mm. And all of us have issued a joint statement now rejecting it and asking government to exempt the pension schemes for the public sector um, workers. And the background why we are asking that to mm. be done is because when this new pension scheme was created, the three-tier pension scheme, mm. that took away a 5% contribution from SNCC and sent them to the Bank of Ghana in situation for us setting up our own um, scheme to manage that. That's the component of the pension that gives you a lump sum when you retire. Mm. All 5% deductions from public sector workers were lodged in a temporary pension fund account. This temporary pension fund account with the Bank of Ghana, when we finally set up our scheme and government was to transfer this money mm -hmm. to the scheme, government converted this into bonds. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it, our initial uh, operating money that we got from government was not cash, was not money, was government instruments, bonds. 
the act regulating pensions in this country and the regulatory authority, the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, also continue to guide how pensions are managed. And they require that a significant proportion of pensions are put in government bonds. Mm. So all our teams are heavily exposed to pension uh, to, to the government security. So if you took our initial money and gave us bonds, mm. and the law says we should invest all in bonds, we are investing most of our money in bonds. People are going to be retiring every day. Right. As we speak, government is owing us about eight months arrears of this five percent contribution that should have gone into these funds to be managed. Mm. When it is paid, it's not going to be paid with any interest. The worker is expecting that you are investing this money, and therefore, when I'm going, I'm uh, on retirement, I'm receiving from you an amount plus an interest. And you have had money in IES coming eight months later with no interest. So if in, under this circumstance, all the money is lodged with you, you say you are extending the bond tenure, you are zero rating it for next year. How do you handle those who are retiring? Right. And at the end of the day, how would the people go home? People will go home worse off. This is the plight of the public sector workers. And it's the reason why we in the forum and the medical association for that matter are saying our position is that pensions should be exempted, public sector pensions should be exempted from this debt exchange program, and that is where we stand. Right. What do you think should have been done before, the, uh, before announcing the policy? Well, it's consultations engagement right. because if we are engaged uh, properly, I'm sure we would have brought all this to the knowledge of government, mm. even though we think they already know this. And we could have had discussions and looked at other alternatives. Because if you are exempting individual bondholders, mm. one critical group that we thought government should have looked at as exempted is this public sector occupation um, pension scheme. Because of this explanation that I have given you, government should have thought of it. Because you take my money, give me bonds, and later tell me that the bonds you yourself have given me, unilaterally, you are zero rating it for one year, you have changed the, percent, the interest or coupon rate for the subsequent year without any discussion, and this is what you are doing. It's not, it's not a fair position. Hmm. Right, Titus, um, let us in on some of the challenges that will come with it um, for the Ghana Medical Association should the policy be passed. Well, I mean, the first one we talked about is going to be liquidity challenges, right. which is that immediately people are retiring and you need to pay, and in a whole year you are zero rated, then whatever you have coming in, you are either going to be paying those who are retiring from the contributions of members who are contributing that year, which already government is also in arrears. So where does the team get money to pay those who are retiring? That's the first challenge, which I don't know how they intend to solve that. If it is that uh, liquidity buffer thing, um, company or fund that they are setting up that is supposed to manage it, we don't know the details. Mm. The next thing is that we have to mention healthcare delivery. For all private health insurance companies mm. have their funds. A lot of them have invested in government securities. If they also face liquidity challenges, the challenge is going to be that they cannot reimburse hospitals, pharmacists who have provided services to individuals who are carrying their card. This will mean that you will, can be carrying the card of any of the private health insurance companies. You appear at the hospital and you'll be asked to pay because the company is unable to pay the hospital. Not only that, if pharmaceutical companies are not getting their money, you are going to have to supply challenges where drugs essential drugs may not be imported or manufactured. You will even have the money, but you will not find this drug to buy on the market because the pharmaceutical companies are old, and this is coming from the fact that the insurance companies are unable to pay them, and this is coming from the fact that the insurance companies are heavily exposed to government bonds. 
So we think that this policy should have been thought through clearly. All stakeholders brought this up so that we can bring up these little, little issues and find a common ground. Okay, but have you been called for any consultations yet? Not to the best of my knowledge. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us this morning. That was Dr. Titus Bayo. He is the General Secretary, Ghana Medical Association. Let me